everyone welcome back to my youtube channel thank you so much for joining me if you're new here my name is holly i make food and fitness content and today we're gonna be sat down i've ordered some lunch we're gonna have lunch together and we're just gonna do a big girly q and a because i feel like there is so much that we need to catch up on and i thought the best way to do it was to get juicy questions from you guys and we will just deep dive into my life and i will overshare on the internet for probably the next half an hour i have actually got a really lovely like chicken caesar salad on the way so i'm probably gonna have to pop off some point to go and grab that but i think we should just dive in these always make me laugh so much because i say to you guys don't hold back make them juicy some of these questions let me just for example this one does american meat taste the same as british there is a time and a place but that is so rogue i literally read it and i was like because I think we all know what you mean, babes. If my mum is watching this, she has probably just been sick in her own lap, just hearing me even say those words. That's <laughs> honestly. On that question, a lot, and I would probably say 95% of these questions are about one singular thing, which I was kind of expecting, and we will definitely deep dive into that. But I'm going to start with some lighter, but still also juicy ones to begin with, and then we'll, we'll head into that subject matter a bit later on. <laughs> So this first question, I have actually had a few DMs about this, was do you get any tweakments like filler or Botox, etc.? So I always want to be like completely transparent with these things because I never want anyone to look on my social media page and think that I just wake up looking a certain way. So I have mentioned some of these things before, but I get lip filler. So I have had lip filler since I was 18 years old. I naturally have very small lips. There's nothing wrong with that. They are very cute, but I just prefer a bit of a fuller look, but still keeping it on that natural side. I, when I first ever had lip filler, I overdid it so badly. When I was like 18 to probably like 22, my lips were way too big. I'm actually going to insert a picture here because this is what happens when you go to filler places or aestheticians that don't actually care about you as a person they just care about getting a paycheck they overfill your lips when you do not need filler i cannot tell you the amount of problems i had in the beginning stages of getting filler because i got a little bit addicted and i just kept going and having them plumped up and plumped up and i ended up with lumps all on the inside of my mouth the filler it didn't even like migrate it just was never put in the right place so i had a big bump down here and it just looked really really horrendous for a really long time and even when I had it dissolved, I still had a really big lump here for a long time. It wasn't actually until I started going to Dr. Roche, who owns a clinic in Manchester, where he actually is probably the first aesthetician that I've ever met who really genuinely cares about how you look as opposed to how much money you're going to pay him. I've been there before and he's been like, no, like you don't need this. So we're not going to do it. Like he will never put filler in you that you definitely don't need. And everything he does is very natural. So I now have lip filler done with him. I also had tear trough filler done at the end of last summer. And I do also get Botox. So I have Botox in my forehead, which is preventative, but it has completely worn off now oh my goodness you just see how high that eyebrow was? so i get botox just to basically stop me getting wrinkles in the future it's more preventative than to do anything now um i did also have botox in my jaw which is called like master to botox because i grind my teeth in my sleep and i have composite veneers so i was grinding them down loads and i was basically having to go back and get chips fixed all the time so i have botox in my jaw to stop me doing that i do also get botox in my armpits which seems a little bit strange but if you don't know this botox is actually really good for preventing sweating so having Botox in your armpits almost like blocks the sweat gland slightly. I would just like to say this isn't something I do because there's anything wrong with sweating. I still sweat out my armpits. However, from the age of 15, I would profusely sweat out of my armpits. Like some people just have really overactive sweat glands and there is nothing wrong with a bit of sweat, but mine would be down to like my hips. That was how far my sweat patches would go down. I would sweat through my blazer in school. I was just really self-conscious about it and it just made me super uncomfortable. So it's just something that I've had since I was about 16 and I've just continued to have it to help prevent the sweat patches but I definitely still sweat out of them anyway it doesn't completely get rid of it it just helps hold a bit of it back so there was quite a lot of questions about whether I'm going to be doing another marathon and what is up next in my running journey so I'm definitely going to do another marathon that was definitely not my first and last it was definitely just my first I loved it so much like that day just felt so good the run just felt so good the atmosphere felt good and just the sense of accomplishment from achieving that but also the sense of accomplishment from actually doing the training like the training 
is so much harder than the actual marathon day itself. And somebody DM'd me and said, think of the marathon as the reward, the training as the work. And that is really how it goes. Like on the day, you don't really have to think about much. Like, you know, you're going to do it. The training and putting in the hours of work when you're tired just to get to that day is what is really hard. And because of that, and because of how much it kind of like took emotionally towards the end, but also like physically and socially as well, you have to dedicate a lot of time to run a marathon. Because of those things, I'm not gonna rush to do another one. I would love to do another one this year, but it will definitely be more towards the end of the year if I do. I'm just not gonna put the pressure on myself because I think it's kind of nice to say, okay, I've ticked it off. I'm gonna have a bit of time to relax, enjoy my runs again, do some shorter distances. But saying that I am actually doing a half marathon this Sunday, in San Diego. So I'm still doing a lot of running. Running will always be a part of my fitness journey. I just love it so much. And I can't imagine my life without running now, which sounds really sad, but there will always be a running journey throughout my fitness journey. And there will definitely be a few more marathons. I just need a little bit of a breather and a little bit of time to kind of build up the motivation to dedicate myself to the training plan again. The next question was, are you missing the UK? I, I miss the people in the UK. I really miss my friends, I miss my family, but I don't miss the UK itself as a place, if that makes sense. Like, I love England, I love the UK, I love the culture, I love a pub garden in the summer, like, I love all of that, but I do feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be at the moment, and I know this isn't permanent, my permanent home is the UK, but just being here, I don't feel, like, homesick in that way at all. If I could take my friends and family and transport them all over here, that would be the ideal scenario. And then on that as well, somebody said, what's the best and worst thing about being in LA? So the worst, obviously, like I mentioned, my friends, that is probably one of the worst things like I really really miss them aside from my friends what else is the worst thing it's really hard to think of bad things I would maybe say how big LA is is the worst thing about it I don't know if that'll make sense but I live in Manchester everything is walkable and I love that and sometimes I notice here it's a lot of driving and it's not much walking which sometimes makes you feel like you're not getting like much fresh air especially if you're in Hollywood where I am at the moment like you're not close to the beach so you can't just walk down to the beach and go for a walk you have to drive to go for the walk and that sounds really nitpicky and I'm definitely not complaining but if I had to say something it's probably just how big it is because you do have to do a lot of driving here the best thing about LA is probably aside from the fact that my boyfriend is here because he's definitely my favorite thing about LA I would probably say I just feel like I don't there's just an atmosphere that I just love like I just there's something in the air about being here and anything this is gonna sound so cheesy and I just feel like anything is possible. Like I just find it such an inspirational place to be in. I see all these different people and I see all these different forms of lifestyle and I'm like, wow, like I like want that. And it gives me that drive and that motivation to like work harder and put more into my work and things like that. So I guess like that's probably my favorite thing about it. Also the palm trees and the blue skies are just absolutely stunning. Like everywhere you go, you just look around and I'm just like, wow, like everything is so nice here. Somebody said, if you could give anyone advice wanting to follow in your footsteps, what would it be? And I'm assuming that mm, is in relation to kind of like my job and maybe like now being in LA and kind of like temporarily moving somewhere. I'm gonna take that as that's what I'm interpreting it as. And I would say the biggest like pieces of advice that I can give you are take the leap. There is no reward without risk. And me coming out to LA, not knowing anyone at the beginning of the year actually turned out to be one of the best things and the best decisions I've ever made in my life. And it has ultimately changed the trajectory of my life and it changed so many things for me and it just made me have so many realizations that if I hadn't have taken that risk and have done that I never would have realized those things in relation to social media and Instagram put yourself out there like I think for so long I didn't start my fitness page because I was too nervous about what people would say and I was too nervous about what people would think but again this has been a life-changing journey for me just because I started a social media page. So you have to just put yourself on the line and put yourself out there because again, there's no reward with no risk. But also if anybody ever makes any comments about you starting a fitness page or a food page or trying to start a page where you're spreading any form of positivity, they are only reflecting on themselves because all you are trying to do is help other people spread positivity, spread good vibes. So for anybody to have 
anything negative to say about that just is so poor on their behalf so just remember that and just go for it put yourself out there make content that you want to create even if it's not really out there at the moment and nobody else is really doing it that's even better because you've got your own niche and you've got your own style just go for it because you never know what could happen and yeah my life literally changed because i made my fitness instagram page so if you are wanting to i guess i don't really like the time like following my footsteps because i don't really feel like i have footsteps to be followed in if that makes sense but if you are wanting to grow a social media page and go on spontaneous trips and things like that then you just have to risk it and put yourself out there that is the advice that i would give you okay food is here let's crack into this bad boy i've never ordered a salad from them before so i'm very excited to this is gonna slap I ordered this from somewhere called like LA Greens on Sunset Boulevard. So it's a chicken Caesar, but I added avocado. Right, I'm gonna pop this in my mouth and then we'll deep dive into the boyfriend questions. Okay, so boyfriend questions. This also made me laugh loads because I've never mentioned my boyfriend's name. I've just referred to him as boyfriend or I've just posted pictures, but I've never said his name. And there's a few of you referring to him by name on these questions. So I don't know whether to be scared or impressed that you've managed to find him. The devil works hard, but you guys definitely work harder. I think the main kind of gist of the questions were just please can you tell us about your boyfriend? How did you meet? Does he live in LA? Are you going to be doing long distance? All of those kind of things. So I, if this is news to you, did end up meeting somebody last time I was in LA. I also want to preface this story by saying like I started this year on an independent girl journey. I literally got to January and I was like I'm gonna stop dating because it just I just wasn't enjoying it. I went on a handful of dates. I'll be honest with you dating actually made me feel lonely because I just would go on these dates and I'd be like how have I not clicked with anyone and then you finish the date you go home and you just think like oh, okay like I'm just back to like square one and I don't know whether anyone's ever experienced that but it just it just was making me feel a bit rubbish so it hit January and I was like right I'm not gonna date I just really want to focus on myself I've got this amazing trip booked to LA I'm gonna go on like a healing girl journey bought all these like self-help self-love books off Amazon I was like I'm gonna take these with me I'm gonna read loads and that was how my trip started and over January and over the beginning of February like I really like came to a point where like I was like I love being by myself like I'm so good by myself now I really validate myself like I don't feel like I need anybody and I was just in such a good place and my beautiful friend Millie came out to stay with me and she was talking about hinge and things like that and I was like oh like I'm not on that like I'm just not interested and she was like we got in LA like it would just be fun and Millie always says like do everything for the plot and live your life like it's a movie which is a lot of the reason why I am now living my life like it's a movie and I was like okay yeah maybe like maybe I'll go on like one date with an American guy like it'll be a good story for my friends it will be funny nothing will come of it i download hinge get chatting to this guy he was like do you want to go on a date this saturday it was very quick and i was like oh yeah it gives me less time to kind of like talk myself out of it i was like yeah definitely let's go and he literally invited me to this country music bar so i was really really excited because we were going to this fun bar he was also from like southern america so he's from alabama i literally get on this date and i would say <laughs> within five minutes i was like this is good but this isn't good like i've never really had that instant of a connection with somebody where like all the conversations you have just like start aligning and i went into this date being like i'm gonna have nothing in common with this boy like he's literally born in alabama and grew up in america and i was born in kent in england and i grew up in like the english school system like i don't know i just had all these things going through my head like we're not even gonna have anything to talk about i'm just gonna have to get really drunk and it just was the exact opposite like we just had so much to speak about and we were just having these like amazing conversations and we had like a really fun night and we ended up just seeing each other for like a few dates after that kind of like within the space of like a few days and I think I kind of like knew at that point that this wasn't going to be somebody that just like kind of passed me by in life. Like I was like, okay, this feels like it's going to be like something a bit more, which can I just say is like the scariest as shit situation. <laughs> like when you have been hurt in the past or gone through a breakup, getting into a new anything is really scary and feeling yourself like feel all those feelings again is actually slightly petrifying like it wasn't an enjoyable experience i will put that out there like i was so scared because i was like this is either gonna end up with me in tears again or this is gonna end up being the greatest love story of my life and i guess that is the risk of like any relationship initially because of 
the fact that I live in literal England and he lives here in LA, we were like, let's just like explore LA together. He was going to show me some fun places. It was going to be super chill. That I think lasted for like a day that we were like super chill. And then we were both like, okay, like, no, like we need to try and figure out if we can make this work because we both feel like it's worth it. And yeah, I guess from that point, we just basically decided that we were going to give it a go. And at least if we could say that we tried it, if it didn't work out, at least we tried. And also we had this big conversation, like you don't, get any reward without a risk i feel like i've said that a million times about this video but it's just such a fact in my life right now because it is a risk like a long distance relationship of this far like is risky and i am either gonna end in tears or it's gonna end like a fairy tale but you just don't know that unless you like give it a go and unless you try it that is basically where we're up to now i obviously went home we did long distance for three weeks and now i'm back in la so we're spending more time together a lot of people were like oh why are you not living together so we essentially kind of are we'd never planned to but he is essentially living here with me obviously we'd only been like together for a few weeks so i didn't really want to come back and have the pressure of just being like in his pocket the whole time and staying in his apartment like ultimately this is still a fairly new relationship so we didn't want to make it like too intense even though it is a more intense situation because of the long distance like if anybody's done long distance or met anybody while they're abroad like you know you're kind of in this like pressure cooker situation where it's like we have to make decisions now and have conversations now that ultimately people don't speak about for months like the stuff that we had to talk about two or three weeks into to knowing each other you wouldn't have those conversations if you both lived in england probably for like five months so it was ultimately a bit more of an intense situation so i just thought that when we came here like i'd have my space he's got his space but we have kind of like actually ended up just like living together it's just kind of how it's worked out anyway which if you guys know me like you guys will probably know from like the past that like i am not someone to jump into these sorts of situations but it's just one of those things and people do say this but like when it just like feels right and it makes sense like it just feels right and it makes sense so that's just kind of the update on the situation at the moment i will potentially introduce him to the youtube family at some point i'm not really sure i haven't really made my mind up on when again like i don't want to put too much pressure on it also i have to respect his privacy and not share too much of like his life online because yeah i'm happy to share my life but now i have to kind of take into consideration how much i share because you know like i don't want to like share too much of like his life and his information as well we're just going to figure it out as we go but yeah i guess that is the big boyfriend update for you guys so just the last one on the boyfriend somebody said will you be taking your new man to the uk yes he will be coming over to the uk at some point it's actually really exciting so he's never actually left the us which is really really common for a lot of people in the states i didn't really realize but because america is so big they literally have everything here so they don't really have too much of a reason to leave for holidays they can just travel to a different state but he's never been outside of the us so yeah he will be coming to the uk i'll be taking him to salford take him on a few nights out in manchester as well i think i'm more excited than he is like he was like do you think i'll like it and i was like it's not quite California, but we'll go to Formby Beach in Liverpool and that's pretty nice. If anybody has any good recommendations of like things to do with him, like very traditional British things, please drop them in the comment section below because I literally want to give him like the full English experience. The next question was, do you change your workout slash your diet around your menstrual cycle? Personally, I don't tend to, but if I am on my cycle and I'm working out and I'm finding it super, super difficult and I'm super fatigued or I'm on a run and I'm just not feeling it and it is that time of the month, I will really give myself a break. I just don't tend to like plan those in, but I just know in that moment, I'm like, okay, like this isn't happening this week because we need to understand as girls. And I feel like so many of us beat ourselves up for this on the week of our cycle or the week before, the week after, whenever you feel the most fatigued. We're like, oh my God, like I'm just not doing enough this week. Like I'm feeling super lazy. Our periods and menstruation literally take the life out of us like they are draining they make us feel sad they make us feel tired they make us feel angry they make us feel unmotivated so if on that week you need to take a step back please just do that and do not beat yourself up for it also we all get cravings around that time of the month if you feel like you need to intake a little bit more food if you feel like you want to satisfy those cravings again please go for it like your body is going through a lot at that time of the month so just giving yourself a bit of a break and potentially a few extra treats is not going to affect your progress in any way shape or form the final question that we're going to wrap up on today is do you have body image fluctuations slash any advice the reason i wanted to answer this one is because i've not spoken about it on social media recently or kind of like 
really generally at all but this is something that i have really been experiencing recently and i don't know why i don't know why it's kind of cropped up i don't know why i'm feeling the way i'm feeling but i am experiencing body image fluctuations and with that kind of like a bit of a negative time with my body image i guess that's the way to put it so i think it is super important to talk about these things because i'm sure that from social media like it probably doesn't look like i ever struggle with things like that and for the most part i don't but for some reason over the past few weeks i have been experiencing quite bad body image issues and i just want to say that when we talk about body image like this is all up here your body is incredible and this is what i've been telling myself recently like your body is phenomenal think about what your body does for you every single day it gets you out of bed it gets you to work it helps you eat food it helps you make money helps you go on holidays helps you go for walks helps you go for runs helps you go to the gym it helps you do all of those things and experience life and it helps you and it carries you through your life experiences i think sometimes we just need to understand that our bodies are so much more than the aesthetics and the way that they look and sometimes we just need to give ourselves a little reality check and remind ourselves of that because looking at ourselves in the mirror and feeling negatively is only up here it's never anything to do with how you look because i promise you you look perfect exactly the way you are so a lot of kind of helping those body image issues i guess comes from really trying to like rewire your brain focus on your brain and the language that you use to speak to yourself because i just dig myself into these holes of looking at myself and being like oh that could look better that could look better like i don't like that on myself like there is no point focusing on all of those horrible things and instead talk about things that you like about yourself talk about yourself in a really positive way i don't know whether anyone else experiences this but when your body image fluctuates you can have a week of feeling like fire like i could have a week where i think like i look good the next week I'll be like, oh my God, like I feel so awful of myself. I literally can't even look at myself. Nothing physically has changed between those two times. The only thing that has changed is my brain. And I have complete control over changing that back. I just need to be kind to myself and be conscious of the fact that physically nothing has changed. I'm just having a bad week and it's making me reflect negatively on my body image it's just it's it's a horrible position to be in and i'm not saying that any of this advice is like easy to take because i'm trying to like swallow my own medicine at the moment and trust me it's not easy it's really difficult because it's almost like rewiring your brain into a different way of thinking it's hard and it takes time and it takes patience but if you can really really practice self-love and being kind to yourself you'll really realize that like you are so much more than your body image and you're so much more than those nasty words that your brain is telling yourself is kind of a bit of a word vomit i've got like how i've been feeling but also how i've kind of been dealing with it but if you are experiencing that like you are definitely not alone and hopefully you can take maybe like something that i've just said and it will help you but yeah like i said you are definitely not alone and i feel like especially coming up to summer it's hard because as much as we don't like to focus on the way that we look when we're putting on less clothes and when we're putting on bikinis and we're going on holidays there is an added pressure we need to support each other we need to support our friends if they're having bad body image days that is actually exactly why i created strong girl society which is the facebook community that i run but also why i created the guides that i created because the foundation of that was that last summer i suddenly had this realization that i was training not for how i looked in a bikini but just to feel strong and it was the most empowering thing and don't get me wrong i still have my off weeks like i'm having at the moment but ultimately that is like my core belief is that we should all be training to be the strongest version of ourselves not the smallest version of ourselves and we can all help each other do that so i'm going to pop the link actually for the facebook community down below honestly it's the most supportive like community of girls and if you ever post that you're having a bad body image day there will be 10 or 20 people to help pick you up and help give you advice and that is why i just love it so much i am gonna sign off the q a here guys thank you so much for your questions i hope i've spilled some tea and update you guys on some things in my life at the moment also please don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys for the next video Thank you.